So that was Mozart's Eine Kleine Nachtmusik in G major. That's the opening of the first movement. And I think everybody's familiar with that tune, but I'm wondering, uh, we probably all have it, can we solfege it? Just based on what we heard. So this is the tonic G. sing a triad. dominant seventh chord come from? I'm going to give you three facts that I like you to remember about the dominant seventh chord in this lesson. The first, sol, fa, ni. Historically, a seventh is not allowed as part of a chord, right? Because it's a dissonance. It's inherently a dissonance. So what wound up happening over the course of history, these resolutions from the dominant arpeggiated within the chord itself. It became part of the identity of that chord. So this is the origin of the dominant seventh chord. It's voice leading origin. Number two, adding fa to the triad 
not only creates a dissonance with sol as a minor seventh, it also creates a dissonance with t as a tritone. Normally this interval is not allowed, and it creates, part of the, uh, the, the reason why I said it adds tension to the resolution is that it creates a half step resolution between fa and mi. And the tritone with t resolves to do. So fa, mi, and t, do. Those are the two most important tendency tones of the dominant seventh chord. Fa will always resolve to mi, t will always resolve to do in the voice theory progression. And the fact that this causes a tritone adds that extra like unique sound in the dominant seventh chord, that dissonance, and it has to resolve inward. And I can also have t as the upper voice and fa beneath it somewhere, and then it would res resolve outward. So, fa always resolves to me, t always resolves to do. The third point I'd like to make is that it can be presented in any order. It's not necessarily like item kind of knock music where it's basically a straight descending arpeggio. Um, it can be any order and it can be partial. meaning one of its members can be present in the chord, two, three, or it can be presented complete. So if you see a voice sitting progression or one of our melodies that we're gonna to practice today, and it has any one of these scale degrees, the harmonization, the implied harmony would probably be the dominant seventh chord. So let's look at our first example. Um, this is page 229, example 772. Does everybody have it? Sorry, you two will share. You guys are sharing. Okay. Does everybody have the page open? Okay, good. So this is the tonic. Can we sing a tonic triad? Form the melody, the basis of the melody from classical music. So let's sing this like it's a jig, it's a dance, a happy dance. Okay. Maybe it's not that bad. But. One, two, three, four, five. So down, 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 T Ray, so so far, Ray, down, 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 T Ray, so so so. Yes. So down, 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 down. Yeah, I'm going to be up for the 
same register. Cool. Beautiful. Can anybody tell me, so I said it's a G, right? What about the form? measures and then four measures. Mm -hmm. Okay, why did you say that was a division point? Um, because it kind of starts the melody over. The melody repeats, yes, very good. So four measures and then another four measures where the melody repeats it again. Does anybody know what that's called? Well, it's kind of an incomplete definition, but... No? <laughs> period. That's a period. Have you guys studied period yet? In theory class? No? Okay, so period basically is an eight measure structure, okay? And it's divided four plus four. <coughs> the first four phrases will end with a half cadence. So we ended on re, the first line of music, the first four measures ends with a mel melodic re, and then you guys sing like so, so, so underneath it. Because that's an implied five chord, which is a half cadence. Then the next four measures, it starts the same exact way, but this time it ends with a perfect authentic cadence, PAC, because it ends on the tonic scale degree one, DO, and there's an implied tonic triad underneath it, okay? Uh, what about the dominant seventh chord? Where's the dominant seventh chord in this melody? Mm -hmm. That's like complete measure two. Measure two, uh-huh. And since it repeats in the second half, where else? Six. Two and six, good. Now you'll notice in the first phrase of this period, the fa is present in the melody, right? Does it resolve properly? No. It goes straight to a do, right? And then the do rises to re, and the phrase ends there. Now that's an interesting move by Mozart. It's like he put the, hot, the mustard on the hot dog, but he didn't want to take the bite, okay? He didn't resolve it the right way, at least melodically. We don't know what happens in the other voices. But that sort of gives the phrase a feeling of incompleteness. And that incompleteness is confirmed by the fact that it ends on a dominant triad as a half cadence. So that forces the melody to go forwards. And so I guess it, I should say, it necessitates the second phrase of this period. If you look in the second phrase, does it resolve properly, the dominant seventh chord? Mm -hmm. He gives you that me in the melody. And it actually creates a mi, re, do uh, voice city progression that cadences the melody. Let's say it one more time with all this information in mind. It's a G, 6 8, and then be happy dance, right? And there's this interesting tonal drama that happens within it built into the phrasing. to the next page. This is page 237. Example 794. Does everybody have it open? Okay. This is the key of D major. Thank you. 
notice has an interesting leaf of a seven. Where's the seventh leaf? Which measures? Somebody's pointing to it. <laughs> measures? Two to three. Two to three, exactly. That's the leaf. And you'll see it's the outer extremes of a dominant seventh chord, right? Now, normally, that would be a difficult interval to sing because it's a dissonant leaf, right, of a, of a minor seventh. But because our ears are so tuned to the dominant seventh chord, if we were to sing just a complete dominant seventh triad, our dominant seventh chord arpeggio, can we try it again? And we just got rid of those middle two voices and we sang the outer part. We have that minor seventh. So thinking harmonically would actually help us uh, sing this interval in tune. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that this is not a period, although it's also eight measures long. This one is called a sentence, the form. Also eight measures long, but instead of four plus four with two cadences, this one is two plus two plus four. And the end is a perfect authentic cadence. So there's only one cadence in this one, it's at the very end. And the subdivision of the phrases is different in this one. If you look at the melody, it bears this out. So measures one and two, including the pickup, have this, uh, two, it's a two measure first idea. Then the pickup to measure three and four makes up the second two measure idea. Then the pickup to the final four measures pushes all the way to the cadence. So there's kind of an acceleration of ideas that goes all the way to the cadence. It's a very exciting kind of a form. Um, so with that in mind, can we now sing it as a minuet dance, right? It's kind of, it's another happy dance tune. Uh, put a lift after do, mi in measure two, and another lift after mi, sol in measure four, and then sing the whole way through to the end after that, okay? So we're gonna phrase it a little bit differently this time. easier to sing the melody and it could be actually more fun because you're sort of following how the, the form unfolds. Great, so for homework I'd like you guys to compose your own, in this case antecedent consequent period, featuring a dominant seventh chord, just like the first Mozart example we sang. You can choose any key, uh, up to three sharps or three flats, you can choose any meter that you want, try to make it a dance tune like a minuet or a jig like we studied today. Uh, first measure is going to be tonic triad, second measure dominant seventh chord, third measure tonic triad, fourth measure dominant triad, make a half cadence. Then you're going to repeat the first two measures in measures five and six, and then seven and eight are going to be a perfect authentic cadence. Okay, with, a, with the last measure having do only in the, in the, in the melody. Okay, thank you guys very much. <laughs>